Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about buckling analysis in SOLIDWORKS. As you know, buckling is a lateral instability that happens in columns that are under pressure. So it only happens under pressure, not under tension, like uh, in columns or pillars of the buildings that are carrying a lot of uh, load from the weight of the building above them, so they are under compression. And uh, the specific thing about buckling is before this compressive load reaches a critical level, the uh, instability does not start. So the column looks perfectly fine and the compressive stress is typically way below the uh, yield strain and um, plastic strength for sure. And you don't see much of a sign of problem. You don't see any, uh, basically, a sign that this building is going to collapse. The pillar, the column is going to collapse. And then all of a sudden, once the load goes above that critical load, here we calculated using the Euler formula, then you see the instability starts. And once it starts, it doesn't go back. The lateral deflection of the beam keeps increasing until the whole system collapses and it goes to complete failure. So now the amount of load that you need to put on a beam or a pillar or a column to uh, basically uh, go through buckling, the buckling starts, is given by Euler formula. The Euler formula says that load is equal to pi squared EI over KL squared, where E is the Young modulus of the material, I is the minimum moment of inertia for the cross section. And uh, then we have KL squared. L is the length of the uh, beam or column that is not supported from the side by any uh, structure. And K is a coefficient that depends on the end condition, on the boundary conditions. For example, if both ends are fixed, it's different from if only one side is fixed, one side is free, or one side is fixed, the other side is supported by a roller, so it can move in one direction, not the other direction. So this K is defined for different uh, boundary conditions. For the case that I'm going to examine where one side is fixed, the other side is uh, free, it is equal to 2, okay? So again, this I that I have is I minimum, really, right? It's the minimum uh, cross-section that you have. And um, so let me also change that here to this number. Okay, so before this critical load, nothing happens after that instability starts and grow until the lateral friction completely breaks the uh, column. So now if I want to study that for this I-beam here, where the cross-section of it is given like this and the units are all in mils. So let's see how we do it in SOLIDWORKS. So this is the I-beam. And uh, as you saw, I need some numbers. Uh, if I want to see the number that SOLIDWORKS gives me is uh, the same as what theory gives me. I need L, the length of the beam, which as I said is half a meter. E is here, I used um, aluminum, so this number is 69 uh, gigapascal. I mean, I have to get it from SOLIDWORKS, K is two. And uh, how do I get uh, I mean here? So I go to evaluate, I go to uh, section properties, and I click on the cross section and say calculate. And then it gives you basically some um, moments of area in millimeter to the four. The unit is millimeter to the four, as you can see. And between these three numbers, if you want, uh, two of them are the ones that you should pay attention to, the two axes that are on the cross section. So those are X and Z. Don't pay attention to this here. You have to compare against the um, global X, Y, Z. So this is X and this is Z. So it's either LXX or you might call it IXX, either this one or this one. And between these two, one of these numbers is smaller and definitely that's this one because this number is 91,000. This number is 521,000. 
So definitely, if there is a uh, an axis for um, uh, buckling, it is going to be about the z-axis, which is this axis that is uh, parallel to the web of the beam, right, or perpendicular to the uh, uh, flanges. So the axis of bending should be this uh, z-axis here, right, or in this case, this kind of axis of symmetry that goes up and down. So uh, let me just draw a line here. So this axis here is going to be the axis of buckling in our case, right? So um, it is going to happen about this axis in red, because if you draw the same line that passes through the centroid, but perpendicular to that, this one, this is that 500,000. And clearly you see that the moment about this axis is way bigger than the red axis. So the, uh, the bending is not going to be about this one. This is not going to be your uh, neutral axis. Okay. So now that I have that and everything, if I use theory, theory says uh, the critical load is going to be about 62,000 newtons. Now, in this case, I'm going to apply 10,000 Newton in SOLIDWORKS, and you'll see that SOLIDWORKS will give me a load factor of 6.24, which means uh, the load, the critical load, is 6.2 times bigger than what I have currently applied. So, as I said, I am going to, in SOLIDWORKS, it asks you to apply some load and I'm going to apply 10,000 Newton, which is uh, 1 over 6.2 of this uh, critical load here. So um, let's go ahead and see how we can do it, right? So um, we want to do it in SOLIDWORKS. We go here to simulation. We go to new study and then we click on the buckling, which is under advanced simulation. And I OK that and then it is asking you for a fixture. So I click and make a fixed geometry and I add it to the bottom of the uh, beam here. So I say uh, that should not move. And then it is asking you for uh, a physical load. So I go under external load, add the force, add it to this top surface. And then I use 10,000 uh, Newtons, as I said. And then I click on Mesh and say Mesh and Run. And it creates the mesh, and then it runs the finite element analysis and gives me the critical load and the kind of safety factor, basically. That load factor is like a safety factor. It means you have a safety factor of 6 here. Right? So if you increase your load to 10,000 Newton by 6 folds, still it's not going to buckle, right? So you see that one is shown here, load factor. Now it says the deformation and scale is 7.8. What does that mean? It means if you uh, look here, if you animate this, or if you look at this uh, lateral deflection, it is uh, scaled up by about eight times bigger than reality. So if I right click here on the result and say animate, First of all, you clearly see that the um, uh, deflection is about, as I said, the uh, z-axis. It's not about the other axis, right? So clearly see the direction that is going to buckle. But this is the scaling with a big scale factor, okay? It's like seven, eight times bigger. And if you don't want that, you can go here and look at the definition, right? And... Um, you can change the scaling. So you see the scaling as uh, automatic, but if you say true scale, which is one to one, then definitely the uh, amount of displacements, lateral displacements is gonna be uh, a lot smaller, more realistic. So this is the real buckling that would happen. Not buckling, the uh, lateral deflection, which is not still at a, an unstable level. Okay, so although it might move a little bit laterally, still not uh, unstable because it goes back. Once the load goes away, it is going to go back and you are in good condition. 
right? So uh, this is the application of buckling. As you see, it was quite simple. And of course, you can go to the fixtures and add uh, fix hinges, roller sliders, bearing fixture, elastic, and all those do really is they change this factor K. So the more you support it laterally and avoid this side uh, deflection buckling, the more you support it in these directions, basically the higher you can make the critical load or the load factor, right? As I said, that all translate to reducing this K. Because when K is in the denominator, K goes down, the critical load goes up. So, uh, and you can simulate all of that in SolidWorks. So hopefully this short video was useful to you and I will see you in my next lecture. Thanks.